right, so we will put our valve in. Um, obviously, we're going to make sure our drain port is going downhill. So when we shut off our ball valve, this will drain out all the water. Easiest way to do this, guys, you can measure the two distances and then mark it on your pipe. Typically, I just mark one side and then mark the other side. That way, I know that I'll be cutting out this side. You can exit. I'll be cutting out that section of pipe. So to do this, we are going to shut the ball valve off on the main. I do have a bucket here just in case I get water, which I definitely am going to because I didn't drain anything down. Um, on this house, I have a concrete floor, so I will just drain this down this way. Actually, I'm going to get some water here. So, Guys, I am, because I'm going to get a little bit of water from this house, I am going to drain it down and then I will be right back. Alrighty guys, I'm back and I got quite a bit of it drained down. I just turned on a first floor faucet. Um, typically, if it was anywhere from chest down, I'd probably just cut the pipe because of the concrete floor and then just clean it up after. Uh, but because this one is overhead, I really didn't want to take a shower. Um, but we'll get ready to cut this. Keeping our bucket right there to catch our, any of our water that comes down. We are gonna get water. And we cut this out. Okay, so I got that cut and this is draining now. So we'll drain that through. And I'm just showing you guys this way. Most of the time I would cut this side and then stab this valve in there. Um, just so that the water would stop. You are going to get a little dripping when you cut, stab the valve in, but it, it's not so much of a stream like it is right now. Uh, but let's cut our second mark on this side. Alright, so we got two fresh cuts. We'll grab our sintering, throw it over the top. Grab our other centering. I probably can set this bucket down now. It's mostly drained out. Put our other centering on the other side of the pipe. All right, guys. So we're gonna throw our valve in on both sides. Um, they are, it is pretty tight, but it's not not horrible. Um, this is why I like the one-handed valves the one-handed Watts Packs holders. Uh, you just open it up, squeeze it down to engage. Once you see the white dot, you have gone far enough, and then you just hit the release on it. Um, but the reason I like the one-handed is because I can crimp it down on just the notch of, I'll show you guys before I crimp it down so you guys can see it. On the actual cinch ring, they actually have a square, and what happens is you are pinching that square um, that both sides will actually be completely touching by the time you're done cinching it. Just so you guys know. Um, but we are, I'm holding the cinch ring with one hand. You can kind of move it once you're cinched on. I'm holding the pipe with one hand and then cinching with the other side. Um, the valve does come out probably about half an inch. So you do have a little bit of play range when you are squeezing these down. Um, that the white is showing now. So that side of the valve is done. We'll release that. Now you can see both sides touching at the, at the joint. We'll get ready to cinch the other side. Hold the pipe. I like it right there. Awesome. And that is in guys. Um, so that valve is completed. And that valve's completed, guys. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be showing you guys how to solder in a ball valve on a copper water line um, and also how to press in a ball valve with a press cut uh, ball valve, um, two different types of copper shutoffs. Uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know what you guys got.